When an infant is born, one of the first questions asked is often, is it a boy or a girl? And sometimes the answer is, I'm not quite sure. There are a variety of conditions which can be classified as disorders of sexual development. And this term is, uh, in many spheres, becoming uh, more common, replacing previous terms such as hermaphrodite and intersex. In these conditions, there is a difference between the gender one would predict by looking at the chromosomes, by looking at the gonads, perhaps through a histological examination, and the appearance of the external genitalia. It affects one infant in perhaps every 1,000 to 4,500 births. As embryos and fetuses developed, there are certainly genes to be considered. After all, males have all of the genes they need to be female, and females have all of the genes they need to be male, except for the SRY gene on the Y chromosome. There are hormones of estrogen and testosterone. Both males and females produce both during their lives, uh, but during fetal development, testosterone and estrogen uh, are more uh, appropriate in the male fetus uh, where the fetal testes are active than in the female fetus. Uh, there are many tissues which are homologous. So for example, the clitoris and the penis result from the same embryonic tissue. They are simply given different hormones. The labia and the scrotal folds are uh, resulting from the same embryonic tissues. They are just given different uh, hormones. Uh, the same would apply to male and female glands. Uh, there are ducts uh, which form in male fetuses which need to degenerate, the Mullerian ducts, because they are appropriate in females. There are ducts which develop in female fe fetuses, the Wolfian ducts, which will also need to degenerate. Thus, male and female fetuses have the ability to express many of the genes and produce many of the structures which are more typical of the opposite gender. Genitalia would be considered to be ambiguous in an infant which was chromosomally XX, but which had an enlarged clitoris, which might resemble a penis. Labia, which were fused or perhaps even resembling a scrotum with folds. A urethra opening in an atypical site. Lumps or pockets in the labia, which would resemble testes located in a scrotum. In an XY infant, ambiguous genitalia could include hypospadias, the condition in which the urethra does not reach the tip of the penis, opening instead on the underside of the penis. One or both testes may not be descended into the scrotum. An abnormally small penis could resemble a clitoris, and the urethra might exit closer to the scrotum. The scrotum could resemble labia and may accompany a micropenis. What could cause this? Well, for infants who are XX, they could be exposed to too much androgen, and the main cause is CAH, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, in which uh, the adrenal glands overproduce androgens caused by a deficiency in a specific enzyme. But excess androgens can come from other sources. A mother could be taking anabolic steroids. Certain medications given to the mother might result in uh, this. Uh, there could be mutations in genes needed for the ovaries uh, development and the production of estrogen, like aromatase, or the estrogen receptors. There could be uh, deficiencies in other enzymes, which could lead to an excess of androgen. If the mother is deficient in the enzyme aromatase, then excess testosterone is produced because she isn't making as much estrogen. This could also be a problem of the placenta, where there's a placental aromatase deficiency. Uh, the female could have two X chromosomes, but the SRY gene uh, could actually be located on one of her X chromosomes as opposed to its usual location on the Y uh, chromosome. An individual could be a mosaic where some of their cells have only X chromosomes and thus are female, but some of their cells have X and Y chromosomes and would then be male. Uh, so they could have a testicular tissue in an ovary or ovarian tissue in a testis uh, producing an ovotestis, or they could be a, a true hermaphrodite with an ovary and a testis. 
There is growing concern that there might be endocrine disrupting chemicals that might originate from plastics or pesticides or even from water supplies which contain estrogens or other uh, hormones uh, based on urine, whether this be from human or say livestock, which could disrupt fetal development. There are numerous reasons that an XY infant might develop ambiguous genitalia. In typical male development, the SRY gene on the Y chromosome, which is a transcription factor, turns on the expression of other genes such as SOX9. And then these other genes such as SOX9 and others turn on additional downstream genes uh, which then uh, start uh, typical male development. If these genes are missing or mutated or do not work as effectively, this can then uh, cause ambiguous genitalia or female genitalia in males. Uh, the enzymes which make testosterone may be inactive or deficient. The androgen receptor might uh, be uh, mutated and uh, inactive or it might have decreased activity. Testosterone typically is converted into one of two forms, either DHT uh, or estrogen, and the enzyme uh, reductase is required to convert it into DHT, and that deficiency can lead to ambiguous genitalia, as would mosaicism and, and potentially endocrine-disrupting chemicals. Treatments for ambiguous genitalia could involve reconstructive surgery, for example, removing blockage of the vagina, correcting hypospadias, uh, joining separate scrotal sacs, removing underdeveloped gonads, which might have a risk of malignancy. Uh, treatments could involve hormonal therapy, such as supplying estrogens uh, in the case of individuals who would develop as female, or androgens in individuals who de will develop as males. GnRH agonists, which would prevent testosterone from being made in mini-puberty, which might cause an individual developing as a female to have more male uh, features. Uh, this would undoubtedly uh, best be suited with a team of health care professionals uh, given the various aspects of the medicine involved working with the parents considering the emotional well-being of the child. In the past, it was more typical that uh, cases of ambiguous genitalia would simply be raised as females after reconstructive surgery. And there have been cases in which individuals felt later in life that the gender which was chosen for them uh, at birth uh, was not what they identify with and then uh, perform reconstructive surgery uh, so that their uh, anatomical gender more closely matches the gender they identify with.